Hi, it's Katrina. From parasites that pop ants' heads off to making animal-computer hybrid robots, here are 10 of the most fascinating cases of mind control in nature. Number 10. Euhiplorchus californiensis The Euhiplorchus californiensis is a parasite that is primarily found in Southern California, hence the name. These parasites live in the gut of shorebirds. Once the very tiny eggs of these parasites develop, they are released into the waters through the shorebird's feces. These eggs will live and develop into larvae if they are swallowed up by snails. Once the larvae reach a certain stage, they are able to escape the snails, which is when they then find killifish. They continue to live in the brain of the killifish, where the parasites begin to control the fish's activity. Once in the brain, the mind control begins. The parasites make the killifish swim to the surface of the ocean where they start swimming in circles. This makes it easy for the shorebirds to see the killifish, catch them, and then eat them. Once the shorebirds have eaten an infected killifish, the cycle begins again. Number 9. Acacia Trees Ants and acacia trees have had a relationship for generations. For the longest time, people just assumed this is how it was, and no one really looked into the reasoning for this relationship. That was until some scientists discovered that the relationship is actually more one-sided than what people have previously thought. On the outside, this relationship looks to be a win-win for both the ants and the trees. The acacia trees provide the ants with food and hollow thorns, which can be used as nests for the ants. In return, the ants protect the acacia trees from herbivores. Further research has shown that the ants also keep bacteria away from the leaves of the acacia trees, which helps keep the trees' overall good health. However, continued research from scientists has shown that there is a bit of manipulation from the acacia trees to help keep this relationship strong. It turns out that the food that the ants eat from the acacia trees actually contains a chemical which will change their brain chemicals and put the ant into a defensive mode, making them more likely to protect the trees. Number 8. Forid Flies Forid flies are very tiny flies that love to take over ants. Over 20 species of Pseudactian flies are known to take over fire ants in South America. As an adult, they are about the size of an ant's head. The female fly attacks the ant to insert anywhere from 100 to 300 of its eggs into its thorax. Once the eggs hatch, the larvae move to the head of the ant, take over their minds, and then pop off their head from the inside. This is why they are also called ant decapitating flies. The larva keeps its host functioning and stays in the relative safety of the colony. Then, when the maggot is ready, it makes the ant leave the colony and die in a humid, cool place. It releases a chemical that dissolves the ant's membranes, causing the ant's head to fall off. The larva then begins to pupate inside the head, and when it's ready, a new ant decapitating fly crawls out of the ant's mouth. Spooky, right? These flies are now being brought into the U.S. to control the population of black and red fire ants that have started to invade and cause millions of dollars worth of damage to agriculture. So, if you see a bunch of severed ants' heads, you'll know why. And now for number 7, but first, be sure you are subscribed before you leave. We have lots of new videos coming up. Number 7. The Alcon Blue Butterfly there is a beautiful parasitic butterfly which is known to fool ants. These butterflies are called the Alcon Blue Butterfly, and before they turn into butterflies, they manipulate ants into taking care of them. They basically do this in the same way that the Toxoplasma gondii parasite in mice fools cats, but I'll tell you more about that later. When the Alcon Blue Butterfly is still in the caterpillar stage, the caterpillar has a smell on its outer coat, which attracts the ants to it. The ants actually taste this smell when their antenna touches the coat of the butterfly. This smell can actually make the ants believe that the caterpillar is one of their own larvae. The caterpillar is usually brought back to the ant colony, where the ants are duped into feeding the caterpillars more than they feed their own, probably because they are larger and the ants think that it is a super healthy larva. The ants are now in an evolutionary race with this butterfly species, as colonies that have been duped have been changing their chemical signature so that it doesn't happen again. In the meantime, the caterpillar is changing its chemical signature to dupe other species of ants to not deplete the population of host ants. Number 6. 
hairworms, and grasshoppers. A parasite known as Spinocodordes tilini, or more simply, the hairworm, develops inside the grasshopper. The worm then slowly begins to eat all of the grasshopper's internal organs, leaving just the legs, head, and outer shell. The worm can grow to be much, much bigger than the grasshopper, about three to four times bigger. Once the parasite is fully grown, it has complete control over the grasshopper. It then brainwashes its host into a death dive into a body of water, which is something the grasshopper would never do on its own. From there, the worm can detach itself from the grasshopper and carry on with its adventures, usually looking for a mate. Once the worm is no longer attached to the grasshopper, the grasshopper is left to drown and die in the waters. For years, scientists have researched how and why these hairworms are able to brainwash the grasshoppers to basically commit suicide. Through their studies, researchers believe that the worm produces proteins which affect the central nervous system of the grasshopper. Number 5. Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is a parasite that can actually change your behavior and how you act, especially towards your cat. It is more commonly called toxoplasmosis, which is the name of the infection Toxoplasma gondii creates. Turns out that domestic cats are the only known definitive hosts where the parasite can reproduce, and the CDC says that about 40 million people in the United States alone might be infected and not even know it. The parasite is found all over the world, but if you are a healthy adult, there are almost no observable symptoms, but you might really, really be attracted to cats. Studies have shown that rats and mice infected with toxoplasmosis changed their behavior and were no longer afraid of cats, making it easier for them to get eaten and then the parasite could infect the cat and keep on spreading. Once the cat is infected, their behavior starts to change and they often show more symptoms of the infection than any other warm-blooded animal or human. For instance, they can become depressed, which affects their mood and behavior. On top of this, other symptoms of toxoplasmosis are loss of appetite, vomiting, seizures, shortness of breath, muscle weakness, and they might even become partially or completely paralyzed. More recently, toxoplasmosis has been linked to severe neurological disorders such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Also, people with the infection are no longer grossed out by the smell of cat urine. You can catch toxoplasmosis by cleaning out a litter box of an infected cat, eating contaminated meat or shellfish, accidentally ingesting contaminated soil, like if you don't wash your hands after gardening or you eat unwashed vegetables, and from mother to child, which can cause severe birth defects. Like I said before, for healthy adults, you could go your whole life and never show any symptoms, but for people with weak immune systems and infants, it can cause some serious problems. Number 4. The Spiny-Headed Worm Like the Euhoplorchus californiensis, the Acanthocephalans is a gut-dwelling parasite. More simply known as the thorny-headed or spiny-headed worm, the adult worm dwells in the guts of a common bird known as the starling. This worm can vary in length as it can be several millimeters and grow up to 10 centimeters long. Like other parasites, the worm lays its eggs inside the bird, and those larvae travel out through the bird's feces. From there, they look for innocent pill bugs or roly-polies on the forest floor. When the pill bug eats the eggs unknowingly, the larvae from the spiny-headed worm starts taking over its body and eating the pill bug from the inside out. Eventually, the worms begin to take over the pill bug's brain and alter the brain's chemistry to make them love light. Instead of hiding under rocks, which is normal behavior for a pill bug, the bug starts to roam around out in the open. This makes the pill bug easily exposed for a bird to snatch up as food, and once again, the starling's sharp eye finds them and eats them, and the cycle continues. Number 3. Castrator Barnacles The castrator barnacles, more commonly known as the Saculina carcini, is a parasite that grows inside a crab. But as you can imagine, it's called the castrator for a reason. The larva seek out unsuspecting crab and enter its shell from where it is the most vulnerable. It becomes a living syringe and attaches itself into the bloodstream. The more the saculina grows, the more it takes control of the crab. Soon, the crab no longer grows, molds, digests, or reproduces. This is when the crab stops taking care of itself and starts taking care of the parasite and any offspring. All the crab's nourishments go into the saculina, and its tendrils spread throughout the crab, taking over body and mind. It castrates the crab, making it no longer able to reproduce. The male crab's gonads shrink, its abdomen grows in order to carry the offspring of the saculina, and it stops developing its fighting claws. 
Once the eggs are ready to be released from the crab, the crab jumps up and down in the water, releasing the eggs, and then stirs the eggs around with its claws so the eggs can find their own host. These body snatchers affect beyond their hosts and are affecting the rest of the environment. Number 2. Glyptopantiles wasp The Glyptopantiles is a genus of wasps that turn caterpillars into zombies. The female wasps inject their eggs into caterpillars which are already alive and well. From there, the eggs hatch and the larvae start to grow. As they're growing, they slowly start taking over the caterpillar, feeding on its fluids and taking over its mind to turn it into a bodyguard that protects them. The caterpillar slowly starves to death as the larvae continue to grow. When they are ready, the larvae mature and gnaw their way out of its skin and mass. It is then the caterpillar dies and the wasps go on to find a new caterpillar to use as the host for their eggs. In recent years, scientists have brought this life cycle into their labs for study. Through this research, we have learned that they can greatly boost their chances of survival compared to other wasps. But geez, these guys are hardcore! Number 1. The Cyborg Beetle Scientists from two different universities have used biology to create robots that can match the agility and efficiency of animals. The cyborg beetle is a little biobot that can be used for search and rescue missions and as a spying tool. Researchers from the University of California, Berkeley and Nanyang Technical University in Singapore attached a backpack to a giant flower beetle. This beetle is native to Africa and is about 2 inches long. They are controlled through electrical stimulation, which tells the beetle's muscles when to move. First, there are electrodes inserted at certain parts of the beetle's legs, flight muscles, and optic lobes. These electrodes are connected to the microchip backpacks, which are attached to the beetles using organic beeswax. Then, the scientists use a remote control to stimulate the muscles and make the beetle take off, change direction during flight, or hover. The first remote-controlled beetle was created in 2009, and since then, scientists have continued to expand on the idea of cyborg beetles. Beetles are sturdy and can carry a heavy load, including electronic sensors, microphones, thermal sensors, all kinds of things. Researchers argue that these beetles would be cheaper and perform better than mechanical drones. Now, these animal-computer hybrid robots will start to include dragonflies and cockroaches. Cyborg beetles could help us explore areas not accessible before, such as collapsed buildings and all kinds of other things. Thanks for watching! Hope this didn't scare you too much! See, nature is scarier than Game of Thrones! Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time! Bye!